Wow, what an event. The, uh, the community and ecosystem is alive. Uh, it's been really a fantastic three days with the ESPA program, running the boot camps and bringing nice, nice fresh new ideas into the ecosystem, storage providers. We got to see um, Filecoin Foundation and Phil Vegas introduce the future with AI modeling and some investment strategies that we all should be considering. Um, and DStore and, and Protocol Labs given us uh, the roadmap, if you will, for phase two. And, and all the cool things on how to sell into the enterprise. Um, and obviously, the architectural groups from ICC and Intel uh, on the tech. Couldn't be uh, more proud to be part of this, this community and this ecosystem. So today, I'm going to uh, lean in a little bit on our journey and really the value of Filecoin and how we have come to realize um, that light bulb moment. It wasn't easy, but we got there. So for us, it starts with the art of the possible. That means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For us, it means thinking out of the box. Right? What, is, what, what really is the art of the possible? It's people and innovation. And sometimes we look at that differently. We look at the technical side and, and we forget about the people side or vice versa. Right? So ideas and the exchange of those ideas and the collective to, to contribute towards something like the greater good um, is really what drives the impact of the art of the possible. So today, my idea may not be that good, but the collective ideas may be really good. So I'm not driving, I'm not the captain of that ship that day. Somebody else is the captain and we're all working towards that idea. But tomorrow, it may be a good idea for me. And collectively working together, we get ourselves a nice fleet going and we really can do something special. So if I had to put it into one word, it would be humility, right? Being part of something that is bigger than you and also being part of driving value um, to humanity. So a little bit about how we got here. 10 months ago in this very facility, three partners from Steel Dome sat down the hall and truth be told, before we got out of the introductions, we were scratching our head. We're like, what are we doing here, right? We're Web 2.0 Web enterprise folks. We understand that world extremely um, well. And we were listening to all these terms. There were many tools. There were many projects. There was Bacala. There was FVM being announced. There was tokens. There was fill. There was fill plus. There was sealing. There was unsealing. We were, we were spinning. But it was interesting, right? That art of the possible. It hooked us, We're like, how can we learn more? So with that, we said, let's lean in a little bit. Let's go down the technical track, and let's go down the community track. So we sat through the community tracks and said, huh, I think we got this. I think this is cool. But what is a notary? What is, what, what's data cap? What are the real business processes? Who are the real data owners? How does it work? Like how do we actually get data from the enterprise on to the file coin? What does that look like? What are the SLAs? What are smart contracts? All of a sudden, the confusion sat in again. Um, and part of that confusion was, wow, this is complicated. But what an opportunity. Because the ecosystem and the wider community embraced us. It was really about people, and it really was about innovation. Um, we were babies in it, but we were able to talk to very senior technical engineers across the ecosystem. We were able to lean in with the governance groups. We were starting to understand, even though we didn't come from the, the decentralized Web3 uh, marketplace. So coming from our world, how do you charge? How do you make money? And we thought we had it nailed after our second ESPA, right? Back in April, we were like, we got this. We'll just do some Web 2 to Web 3 stuff, and we'll charge our customers. But then it all kicked in again. Tokens, block rewards. How do you get more block rewards? And I'm sitting here going, then I hear fiat, fiat, 
Fiat, all over the place. Now, I thought Fiat was a car. I, I thought Fiat was a car, and I said, do you mean cash? Do you mean how to make money? Well, we can help you do that. So what did we do? We dug in and started to try to understand tokenomics. I'm here to tell you it was a mistake on my part. Right? So we said, what is this thing called slashing? Slashing? Are you going to come slash the tires on my Fiat? <laughs> I have to pay now? If the storage provider is not doing what they should or shouldn't do, we weren't really understanding it. So then we got it, then we got it down. We said, all right, we got this. And then another term came out, which we did understand in our personal lives. Something was increasing in the community. There were gas fees. I'm like, okay, light bulb moment. We need to fix the complexity. We need to take and unlock this great technology and bring it forward in a very simple way. Innovation, people, we were now hooked. We now had the drug. We wanted to create the art of the possible and start interacting across everyone and anyone in the community and the ecosystem. So at Steel Dome, we lean in on these three lanes. The enterprise data market has their challenges. It's not strange to anybody. Data protection is extremely important. It is the number one business asset. Um, I'd argue it's the number one personal asset in our lives. So the data needs to be protected and obviously needs to be safeguarded and stored somewhere safe. And obviously you want to recover it. So to paint the picture, the challenges on the data growth side in the market that we know very well, very, there's, no, there's no shortage of data explosion. It's growing at an enormous pace. It's complex. There are point systems. There are backup systems. There are cloud systems. There are mergers and acquisitions happening every day. There's lack of skill in some of the enterprise. The, 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 the skill sets are moving around. Right? So what do they do? They write the check. They sit there and say, well, we'll just we'll rack and stack some more. We'll negotiate a better contract. But it's not solving the problem. They have this massive problem on how to manage data. Not to mention, their, cost is their costs are going up. So, our friends from Tolaris mentioned cost optimization, and, and, and Kobe talked about you know, the importance of that. It's, it's king and queen in our world. So risk and compliance. Manage it. <laughs> don't know how else to say it. If you don't manage risk, you're not going to be in business very long. Right? There's no surprise that the casino industry in the past couple of weeks have had a hard time. Right? Cyber attacks are real. Protect your data. Learn how to recover it. Have a good insurance policy, but these things are not easy. They're complicated. And last but not least, it's economics. The CFOs are leaning in now. 90% of the meetings that, uh, that we have with the, with the C-suite, it used to be all about technology. Mm -mm. It's now, what are all these cost factors? How do I consolidate my infrastructures? What are the cool technologies out there? How do I get my AI scientists to understand our five to seven year uh, play? What am I doing with all this data? How do I move it? Not easy. So we said, we got to simplify this. We've got to create a Stratastore as our platform. And we need to create an easy way for the enterprise to intersect with this decentralized archive storage marketplace. So in order to do that, we got to make the, the Web2 applications available on Filecoin. It's got to be simple. So the first thing we did was we took a technology approach in parallel with a commercial approach, which I'll talk about in a second. But in a distributed world or the Web2.0 world, which some people in Web2.0 don't even know they're in Web2.0, the enterprise is spending a lot of money, as we have on the graph on the left, uh, left side. So they have this, uh, this capital outlay. They have this big cost base, and it's continuing to go, grow. So we put together a gateway where we will meet the customer where they are and give them a common access method to get data over to public, private, or decentralized services. So in order to do that, though, back to that confusion, when we went down that road, we had this gray area right down the middle. 
how do we charge for it? How do we make money? Are we going to take, are we going to be part of tokenomics? Are we, are we going to give, how does this work? And then when we looked on the, uh, um, the economics in the decentralized storage market, we learned that people need to make money right now. We have to have storage profitability. And how do we get some of that cash or fiat, <laughs> how do we get some of that money into a service model? Let's reduce CapEx. Let's do something meaningful. So what can you do about it? What can this community do about it? What can the ecosystem do about it? Enable storage profitability. We don't think it's a hard thing to do. So simple solution. Let's harness the power of blockchain to store, protect, and recover our data. It's right in front of us on the screen. Enhance security. Who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to enhance security? Bake it into the solution. So when you go to your customer, and, and if data's on web two, data's on web three, it doesn't matter. Include it into a solution sale. If they want, toggle it. Make it available. If you want to put it on the blockchain, put it on the blockchain. If you want to keep it on, uh, um, you still want to be decent, uh, use decentralized technology and put it on IPFS, put it on IPFS. You want to keep it in Web 2? Keep it in Web 2. Who doesn't want enhanced security? Verifiability, what a concept. <laughs> what a concept that the blockchain and the way it works can allow a customer to be able to verify that their data is there and that the storage provider community is actually doing what they said they would do. And whether I want to look at it every 24 hours or every two weeks, I have the ability to do that. Sure would make my audit tracing better. Sure would make negotiating a good cybersecurity insurance policy better. Who doesn't want that? Cost effectiveness. Make it simple on cost effectiveness. In our world, there is a huge opportunity for this ecosystem. I cannot express it enough. There are NAS environments, SAN environments, multi-cloud environments that are all looking to consolidate in some way, shape, or form. The low-hanging fruit is archive, archive solutions. There's an appetite to discuss that. They'll take a second copy or a third copy and try something new. Will they mess with their production environment? Not yet. So. Preservation, enough said. The ecosystem was built on this, protecting humanity's data. And then highly scalable and it's always available. Who doesn't want to do this? So let's make it simple. Let's unlock the power of Filecoin. So here's the good stuff. How do we get the money and how do we charge and how do we make it easy? And I'm going to show you in a second a technical way we do that so you understand uh, exactly how we're doing that. But in, on the enterprise side, they don't want to keep putting capital out. Now, I say that a little loosely. Of course, there's, there's on-prem environments that will remain in place. Of course, there are hybrid solutions that will be here for a long time. But there's an awful lot of data sets and categories of data sets that can be put in a private or a public or a blockchain uh, solution. So. We went on the storage provider side and said, well, that's easy. Why don't we just put a chargeable bundle together and offer it to the customer, a real solution sale? In order to do that, we align ourselves with technology advisors that know that, know that customer, that have that trust. And now we reduce their run rate significantly by whatever that number is, 40, 50%, right? If you're spending $50 million, we're going to get you down to $25 million over the course of three to four years, put it into a term. Well, what that means to us, the ecosystem, is you now have cash. You can now charge for those services. And in addition to that, we are now taking enterprise data, meaningful data, which is a goal, and putting it on the blockchain. The pure nature of that is going to drive the economics and the tokens and the value of what we already are doing on the Web3 side. Who doesn't want that? All of a sudden, the ecosystem, all of these things, all of these debates, they go away because we're all making money. So 
Software defined storage technology is the key. It's the name of the game. I won't go through this in detail, but I do want to share with you that our, our engineers from day one had a couple of principles in mind. It was always about protecting from ransomware or recovering from it. And it was always about meeting the customer where they are, making the technology available to them where they do not have to change anything unless they want to. So we chose a protocol-based path, right? So any data set does not matter to us. If you want to talk to us over SMB, NFS, iSCSI, NVMe OF, does not matter. HTTPS, we make it very simple to get that data to us. And then we'll do our thing. And we can take you under the hood there and, and, and share that. But we basically do our thing. We, we will do the antivirus protection. We will encrypt the data. We will do what you would expect a storage provider to do in software. We'll do the checksums, all that cool stuff. But the real cool thing is on the back end, we're turning a public, private, or blockchain provider into one big logical disk, right? So we view that when we, S3 being a, a primary connector today for us by far, right? So if we mount that S3 bucket, it looks like a common storage device, a locally attached device to the customer. That's how you make it simple. Now, the customer's got a simple deal. I'll show you the interface in a second, but it's now about you, the storage provider. You have to make it simple for you too, right? We can't just run around using tools that aren't interconnected and command lines. We have our advanced engineers for that. Let them go. But in order to scale, we need some dashboards and some intuitive, intelligent templates that'll be able to make configuration easy. So, in brie briefly, the dashboard is what you would think, and I apologize if it's a little small and you can't see it, but it's the state of the environment. Your protocols, your storage pools, your CPU, you know, the state of what's running through the technology. On the left side, all of the categories are, they're expanded uh, templates that are, from top to bottom, you can't mess it up. So if anybody's ever had to uh, configure an iSCSI environment or, or, or some of these protocols and firewalls, it can get pretty complicated. Well, we template that for every single configuration if you follow it through. Doesn't matter if it's a block device, doesn't matter if it's what I shared on the previous slide. Um, there's, a, there's a service provider folder there. When we expand that, there's service, there's, uh, service provider two, service provider three. All right, so when you open up the, the, the service provider three, that would be all of our uh, uh, connections to the, the S3 provider, um, I'm sorry, the decentralized storage providers. And we make it simple to just move that, move that data over to an infrastructure provider on, on the decentralized side. So, light bulb again. We now know our way. We have found our way. We're not gonna solve everything, but we now realize that we can bring Filecoin value to the enterprise market. We can now bring data resiliency. We can share how to archive and, and then on the back end, we can show storage providers how to make some cash. I don't know about that fiat thing, but cash. Um, data protection, uh, so the way we see it is, archive solutions is, are, are your first, is your first market. We could talk about the different markets on how to get that, the type of data sets, but let's be honest. It is, we have the best cold archive solution on the planet. We're not interplanetary yet, we'll get there, um, but we do have the best um, capability. So if you have a mutable solution, you have a really good Web2 solution, and now you add the blockchain features to that, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want an audit trail and you can't tamper with my data? So. We will, uh, um, we will bring some of the backup and recovery services to the table down the road as some of the tooling catches up. We're working with the tremendous folks um, at Protocol Labs to, to align that with, their, with, with the roadmaps, and the data protection's already there. Now, we kind of we talked about that. So many use cases, be happy to talk to you about them. Many different enterprise use cases to talk about, but I'm going to simplify it um, for the sake of, of, of this presentation. It's simple. We don't care if you deploy, these are virtual machines. All we need is a 100 gig 
somewhere on a, on, on a platform. We can run it remotely over an IPsec tunnel, stick it into a cloud environment, or we can run it on-prem or in your Web 2 or your Web 3 environment. We also decided to take the craziness out of licensing. All right, and, and if anybody's dealt with licensing and how that works, it's complicated. Every feature we talk about and everything we unlock for the community and, and the wider ecosystem is, a, is one simple license. Whatever the license cost is, it is done. You have everything. All right, so our vision is create the orchestration and simple with the enterprise, work with the folks in, in this room and the wider community around the world to create compute efficiencies and then make it easy for storage providers to snap in and offer multi-bundle type solutions that they can sell to their customers. So, talked about keeping it simple. We meet with them where they are. Um, no, no, no need to get crazy yet. Um, so we have many interfaces, but I just decided to show the two that are the most common, believe it or not. It's still the way it is today. Um, web interfaces are still king and queen, right? We have the ability to drag and drop, create multiple folders, and in this case, we're showing Filecoin. They're, set your permissions like you would always do, but very simple, a web interface. We also have file mount, file folder structures and mounts, an SMB or an NFS mount. You would mount it like any other folder that you have in your system today, your G drive, your F drive, your Z drive, whatever you want to make it. Put your data in there. Integration is right to the IaaS, right to the infrastructure as a service provider and all the other craziness and unorganized, if you will, um, activities today that have to happen downstream for sealing and unsealing and, and recovering data. It's all masked. It's very easy now for the customer just to consume, consume these technologies. So what are you waiting for? Come on, join us. I did have a slide that I chose not to put up um, because I probably would have talked about it for 30 minutes. Um, and it was in the same lane as my friends here at Intel about thanking everybody. Because we started out 10 months ago, and we feel through Protocol Labs, the Filecoin Foundation, DStore, all the different programs that we were welcomed with open arms. Um, and we really are driving the art of the possible because of the idea exchanges and the things that I talked about at the, in the beginning. Um, and I can't tell you that holds true. I can't tell you how many times that holds true on the architectural and engineering side uh, about learning and how to develop. It has shaped our strategy in a little bit of a different way than where we were 10 months ago. And we think that's all for the good. So everybody that we've collaborated with, that art of the possible thing, there'd be hundreds of people on that screen. We're working with the, and we're enabling the, the uh, storage providers that don't have infrastructure. We're working with infrastructure as a service providers that, that want to start charging to bring capacity over to the enterprise. We're working with the, uh, with the sealers. We're working with the, you know, the, the, the compute groups. And all of that came out of the ecosystem and what's going on with um, activities like this. So thank you. I'm around. Let's go make some cash. <laughs>